Uh, so hello everyone, my name is Jon Kjærngren and uh, I will be talking a bit of how to connect AVV robots with external systems. And just to clarify, for me, I always look from the robot's perspective and external system is everything outside the robot controller. Uh, so uh, yeah, as I said, my name is uh, Jon and uh, I work at ABB, AB Corporate Research Center in uh, Westeros, Sweden, and right now it's uh, slightly chilly in Sweden, and uh, therefore I have a beard today. And uh, I primarily work with uh, ABB robots, of course, from a software perspective, and also system integration and uh, in a different European projects. So there is always some robots and some computers and people involved, and then I usually try to connect them. So I will start with some acknowledgements, because without these things here, I would probably not be here presenting today. So first off, it's a European project called Symbiotic, which is in the context of uh, Factor of the Future. And it's inside that project I have uh, developed some ease of use packages, which I will present today. And uh, then the next project was, is uh, Rusin, which you heard about yesterday. And uh, during this project, I've taken the packages, gone through the internal ABB open source process, and then made them available online. And yeah, let's, let's just say, in, in ABB, it's not common to make contribution to open source projects. <clears throat> and then finally, but not least, is the community of Ross Industrial. I have gotten a lot of help with the guidelines and uh, conventions from uh, the various members there. And uh, yeah, a few words about ABB. Uh, there are four business units. It's uh, power grids, uh, electrification products, industrial automation, and robots in motion. And then over this is the corporate part, and that is where corporate research exists. And the corporate research is uh, a middle thing between university and industry. And we support the dif different uh, business units with uh, various things. And uh, all in all, ABB is a power and automation company. Okay, so uh, on to the main topic for my talk. So uh, first off, when you want to connect an ABB robot to an external system, then there are a few questions that you should ask. So first off, what are the basic components of our robot setup uh, for ABB? And uh, what suitable interface exists so that you can use. And um, how do you configure all of this and how do you use it? So, the first question, uh, yeah, you have an ABB robot and a robot controller and then something called a robot system. And the robot system is running a specific version of robotware and robotware is the operating system for ABB robots. And uh, you have two core components which are the system configurations and uh, something called a RAPID program. <coughs> and RAPID is the ABB native robot programming language. Yeah, so for the interfaces, there are two that I usually use. And the first one is called Robot Web Services. And uh, it provides some general interaction with the robot via some REST API. So you can uh, check the controller status and start and stop the program and trigger some IO signals. <coughs> and uh, it's a free feature of uh, ABB robots. So it's available in all robots with Robotware 6 or newer. And uh, for the other interface, it's called External Guided Motion, or EGM for short. And uh, it's much more speci specialized communication, and you can use it to stream motion references to the robot controller to yeah, control the motion in joint space or Cartesian. And uh, it's only for six axis robots, and uh, it also requires this uh, robotware six or newer, uh, as well as the purchase of a, spe a special license. Uh, in my opinion, I always find robot web service useful, and then EGM depends on application if there's a need for responsive uh, motion control. So, 
uh, for the final two questions. They can be quite challenging and uh, time consuming. And uh, if you're not used to ABB systems, yeah, then it can be a big threshold to overcome. So uh, this is what I've tried to uh, address with my packages. <coughs> so let's begin with the first one. So you have an external computer, and I have split it into two separate parts, one with lower frequency communication and one with higher frequency communication. And uh, it's, the first one is called ABB. Oh, it's not showing correctly. Yeah, one is called ABB Lib RWS right now. And uh, yeah, it sets up all the necessary communication channels and do, do the message parsing and provides UC APIs. And you can use it to request, uh, send the HTTP request to the robot controller and you get responses. <coughs> and then for the other next package, it's called ABB Lib EGM and it's quite similar. It sets up the communication channel, just do the message parsing and it provides UC APIs. And uh, yeah, EGM works like that the rapid program tells the EGM client inside the robot controller to start sending out feedback messages, and the EGM library replies with motion references, and then this is repeated at the frequency specified and the maximum 250 hertz to control the motion of the robot. Yeah, but these two libraries only uh, facilitates the use of the interface, but they don't do anything for the actual system configuration and robot uh, rapid program. So I have created an optional uh, robotware add-in, and the robotware add-ins are used to extend the capabilities of ABB robot systems. And uh, yeah, this add-in is called state machine add-in, and it loads a ready-to-run program so you can start using the robot quite fast. And uh, yeah, the libraries, uh, both the ABB Lib RWS and ABB Lib EGM libraries exist now in uh, uh, ROS Industrial Git repositories. And uh, the add-in exists in something called the Robot Apps, which is the ABB distribution web page for these add-ins. Yeah, so a few, yeah, the whole purpose with these packages is to save time and simplifies the use of ABB robots, uh, of course. And uh, then a few details about each package. So the first one, there is basically four components or main classes. Yeah, one that sets up all the HTTP and WebSocket communication, and the one class that expands it to uh, take care of the RWS protocol. And then I have wrapped it in some more user-friendly interfaces and finally a special class that is specially designed to talk with this state machine add-in I mentioned. So this special class knows about the system configurations and the variables in the rapid program, so it simplifies the use of that. And uh, yeah, I will skip this list. Uh, there's uh, just specifying what is supported, but it's available online as well. I'm running out of a little bit of time, so... Uh, Moving on to the next one, it's also very similar. It has four main classes and uh, yeah, a base class to set up the communica communication and then one, uh, use more user-friendly interfaces and two special classes. One for use inside external control loops, so you can use it to wait for EGM message, do the calculation, and then send back references. And uh, the other one is used for if you have a trajectory, you can just add it to the interface and it will execute it via this EGM interface. Uh, I have, for example, used Move It to generate uh, collision-free trajectories and then execute them. And I will skip this list here as well for this one. And then this uh, Robotware add-in. Uh, it, it has an installation script that loads uh, this bunch, this um, system configurations and uh, rapid modules and it makes up this ready-to-run rapid program. So uh, the execution flow, it has some initialization, and then it enters an idle state and waits for input from an external system. So the whole intention is to use this with uh, some external setups. And uh, 
the state transitions are triggered by uh, IO signals. And for example, you can use the first library, uh, RWS library, to trigger these uh, changes. And if you have EGM license in the system, this uh, uh, EGM section, which is optional, is included in the program, and then you can start the EGM as well, and it will can work, or it works well with the EGM library. So it all depends on the requirements of your system, what you can use or might want to use. Yeah, I will skip this as well. So for what can you use the libraries for then? So uh, the first one, quite simple case, that you want to offload some computation heavy uh, things that are not suitable for the ABB robot controller. So you can have the ABB robot, and then an external system, be it ROS, for example, and the robot can send a notification that it requires uh, an image to be processed, and the system can do the calculation and send back the result via the RWS library. <coughs> and yeah, for the EGM library, you can imagine you have a measurement system, and you have a, the robot is holding a part, and then you can do the final motion corrections with this EGM library. And if you're using the state machine add-in, it should really be used together with the APB lib RDS library and optionally EGM library. And you can use it for some remote control, for example. So uh, that was some general examples. And yeah, they are all independent and can you be used in any combination, these packages. So for the more concrete example, I will show a video as well. Uh, but here I have used this uh, RWS library and the state machine add-in to facilitate the connection between the ABV robots and the ROS system. Okay, so we have a Yume robot. It's mounted on top, a, on top of a ClearPath Ridgeback mobile platform. And we have some workstation with some uh, uh, sensor telling if there's some parts to process or not. And then we have an external laptop running ROS and all the navigation uh, capabilities, as well as the in this case, the external logic telling where the robot should go and what the Yumi should do when it's reached the station. And uh, most of the ROS integration were done by two interns via this Rosin project. And they, after, yeah, they had a few months to get used to the hardware and play around a little bit. But when they actually put everything together, it took about two weeks with uh, testing and making something up and running. It was not perfect, but uh, it worked. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I will not, unfortunately not be able to show the ex actual application at the table because it's a bit confidential. So, but the important thing is to, that I'm connecting ROS and ABB robots via these packages. So I'll start the video. Yeah, so we have the robot in the background, some static obstacle and a workstation. <laughs> and uh, this is the RWIS view. So we have a glo global plan and some sensor measurements. Yeah, so my colleague is putting in a stack of parts to process and it triggers the robot to go to the station. And uh, yeah, now he will just show the collision avoidance. <coughs> and uh, yeah, and then the robot moves on towards the workstation. And, uh, when it reaches the goal position, it needs to do some uh, position calibration. So it will use the Yumi camera inside the hand to do, find some markers on a table and calibrate the fixtures. And then it starts doing the task. So you can imagine that behind this uh, gray box, it's the most amazing application ever. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it will just keep on going until the sensor says that there are no more parts to process. Yeah. Soon be finished. Yeah, and uh, now it was done. 
So uh, this was all I had to present today. So thank you for your attention and uh, time for questions. <laughs> questions from Jan? I will start. Yes. So I can buy any baby robot today, download those packages, and use it with Ross with the uh, indirect support from ABB. I guess I cannot call you, but yeah. the fact that you're behind the libraries uh, gives me confidence uh, that uh, ABB looked into them. Yeah. So how's the conversation between corporate research and the business units? Because uh, I assume that this is the very final step that uh, we <laughs> might want to hear in one year, maybe. No, there's a, a quite a progression. Yeah, as I mentioned, it's not common within ABB to uh, use or contribute to a, uh, open source. But this is hopefully a first step to show the, the company that we can ha have some uh, benefits from contributing. And uh, yeah, hopefully it will increase from other parts of the company as well. May I have a question? Um, which type of robots are supported right now by this package? Ah, yes, I forgot to mention. I can just go back to one slide here. Yeah, so uh, th 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 this package here is supported by all robots with Robotware 6 on newer, so uh, all of them. And uh, this EGM is only for six access robots, uh, or rather, the, the license for this part here is for uh, six access robots. So you need to, and also the robots are six. Uh, but the state machine add in, uh, I have only tried it with the human robots and some six access robots, but in theory, it should work for all robots with robots where 6.06 or newer. So uh, I have made, tried to make them as general as possible. I was just wondering um, if you could tell us a little bit about your interactions with the open source community. You oh. said this was the first time for ABB to contribute to an open source project. Yeah, and, uh, and for and me, uh, about two years ago, I had never really contributed to any open source. And uh, I have gotten a lot of support, I think. The US have helped a lot. Yeah, yeah, but uh, uh, I, in general, I think it's been going quite well to get uh, help with all the different questions that I've had, and uh, not only for you, but uh, other people as well. So, yeah. So let's thank uh, Jan again.